Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and as you can see here today, we're going to be recreating this little abstract, little round, uh, abstract globular thing. Uh, it kind of looks like the C4D logo. Uh, so we're just going to go over some techniques for first how to draw a spline or you know, create these little objects and how, then how to kind of wrap them around a sphere or use a bend deformer, just basically how to manipulate uh, extruded shapes along uh, curved objects with uh, deformers. So let's get started. All right, so let's just start a brand new scene here. And the first thing we're gonna want to do is let's just go to our let's go to our let's go to our front view here, and we're just gonna make some shapes. So I'm gonna get my pen tool. We're just gonna make a blobby, abstract, curvy, amoeba e looking spline like this Oop. let's close that up cool 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 and we can just kind of adjust this a little bit kind of fine tune this so we're basically we're just making a spline that we're going to extrude uh, so we can get this uh, geometry this little blobby looking thing to kind of wrap or bend uh, using deformers to make some really cool abstract art. You know, everyone's been doing these every days. Uh, let's let's make an every day, even though I like to call them like whenevers because I'm not that committed. Big ups to anyone who is doing those every days. You guys are awesome, rocking out, making stuff. That's the name of the game, anyways. Is to just keep creating and getting better and learning new things, trying new things. All right, so enough tweaking. This is our little amoeba snot looking thing right now. So uh, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go and we're gonna extrude this guy. So we actually have some geometry here. So let's go to our extrude, drop in the spline. And this is just our blobby, rename that. This is our blobby spline. So you would think, okay, so we got this blobby spline. Let's first, try to like bend this using a bend deformer. So let's go and uh, so we need to make this apply uh, to the extrude but we can't really make it a child so to make this bend deformer uh, apply to our extrude we actually need to group these guys together so I'm going to select them both and uh, just go and group these and that will allow our bend deformer to then uh, affect our extrude. So let's uh, let's see if fit to parent works. Nope, it does not. So let's go ahead. Let's uh, let's bend. Let's just rotate this. I'm gonna bend this way, and you can see uh, if I actually adjust the strength. And actually, this is bending the wrong way. Let me just rotate this 90 degrees. There we go. So we're gonna we're gonna bend this like so, and you can see that uh, we have some issues. This looks kind of cruddy. Um, so there's some ways we need to fix this. There's there's some things we need to understand about how splines and extrudes work uh, to be able to give us good geometry. So you can see that from the top, kind of the rounding, this the extruded edge kind of is going correctly, but the caps are just all jacked up. They are foobar. So how do we fix that? Well, first off, let's go ahead and get our uh, let's get our lines here. And uh, right now, I don't think you can see any lines because they're all end gons, I believe. Yeah, so let's let's change this to quadrangles, and you can see this is more visualizing where our cuts are happening. You can now see why things are looking the way they are, is because uh, how C4D calculates uh, these the spline right now is making all these really weird. Uh, subdivisions that look fine when you're not deforming it but once you deform it since all these cuts are not very uniform that's why we're getting these chunky kind of edges here so how do we fix that well the first thing is the the type here that we have our caps uh, being uh, manipulated or uh, viewed or displayed on our screen so we have triangles and we really don't want triangles you don't really want to be working with triangular polygons or anything like that so we're gonna stick with quadrangles and we also have this regular grid here now what that's gonna do is when I immediately enable that it's gonna kinda of slice everything up into a nice little grid 
and uh, make our make enough geometry, enough subdivisions that uh, we're gonna get a nice little curve here. So that looks pretty good right now, uh, but we can also you know make this a little bit. Uh, maybe that's a little bit too much geometry and stuff like that. Uh, one other thing we can do here is uh, go and try to match, because uh, you can see right here uh, that we have some funkiness going on along our edges here. So like right here, we have a big gap there, and that's going to that's gonna kind of look kind of chunky. Uh, so it's not really subdivided very much along the edges. It's looking good on the caps. Uh, but not along our extruded edge here. So how do we fix our edges? Well, that is all uh, defined by our spline here because we're extruding the spline, right? So keep in mind that we set our width to 25 centimeters. So every 25 centimeters, there's going to be a square or a little nice little grid here. Now let's first go to our bend here and just keep that y-axis uh, length because you can see that some of our uh, grid has been stretched out and I want I don't want you guys to be confused, but this is all uniform grid, right? So we're going back into our spline and by default Your immediate points are adaptive. So it's going to it's going to adapt to the spline shape So you can see that when there's a, a sharper curve There's going to be more points or more uh, adaptive intermediate points to make that curve where there's a less steep of a curve like say right here there are less uh, points connecting that spline or interpolating those two points. So you can see that we need to change this so uh, it's almost interpolating the spline uh, in a more consistent way to go along with our grid. Now the, what, the intermediate point mode we're going to want to use for this is the subdivided mode. And you'll notice that immediately uh, we have a lot more uniform uh, segments here or subdivisions uh, and this is all controlled by two things one is by either the angle of the uh, of the uh, the angle of the points or the actual maximum length of each uh, subdivision so right now uh, we can just move this back to five so right now our maximum length is five and this actually works in tandem with whatever value you set uh, in your width on your regular grid. So what you want to do is try to match those two values. So if you have 25 here, we'll want 25 here. So everything matches up fairly nicely. So you can see our subdivisions look good and consistent with our regular grid aside from, you know, some areas here. But other than, you know, some of these really odd uh, edges here, everything's looking pretty nice and uniform. Now, uh, so that's basically the way that you need to subdivide up your extrusions to be able to really bend, uh, make these nice little bendy uh, deformations along extruded objects. So what can we do now? Well, we can then go ahead, uh, and you'll notice that in my original thing, we have nice rounded edges here. Uh, so how we can go about creating that is to, number one, uh, create some fillet caps here. So we got some nice little beveled edges here. Uh, and then we're going to create a single object to kind of break that, to kind of round our Fong shading off. And if we render, you can see that, uh, you know, you're seeing where we have that kind of triangular jankiness going on. It's kind of messing with our Fong shading. So what we can do to smooth this out fairly nicely is to just drag everything uh, into a subdivision surface. So let's drag our extrusion into that and you'll see that we still have a little bit of uh, like pinching almost going on uh, but since we have a subdivision surface we can actually make our original extrude mesh a little a little bit lighter in geometry so we can just uh, you know adjust the maximum length and the uh, width here and kind of see if uh, if making this lighter and then applying the subdivision surface, if that helps smooth out uh, any. So that kind of helps a little bit. We got still a little bit of pinching going on here. So let's actually go the other way and give it more geometry. So maybe subdivision width of 10, and then we'll go again and match the maximum length in our spline and see if that pinching 
So actually that made it a lot worse. So I just want you to kind of compare what giving more geometry does. So we, def we added more points, which if I turn off the subdivision surface, you'll see we have more of these triangles and we're having more of that pinching. So you need to have, you need to find a nice little balance between giving it enough geometry, but not too much. Uh, and then applying that subdivision surface uh, and trying to make everything nice and rounded. So another thing we can do is add some steps to our fillet caps or even making these bigger. Uh, and this create single object, if you don't have this, this was uh, added in a more recent version of Cinema 4D, but to basically, if you don't have this in your version of Cinema 4D, uh, the thing you'll want to do is throw your uh, throw your extrusion into a connect and that'll do the exact same thing. So just keep that in mind for all you folks out there who don't have uh, a later version of Cinema 4D. Uh, another thing we can do is, you know, a lot of this pinching is occurring where we have a very sharp uh, curve. So we can actually go into our spline here and let's go to our actual front view here and maybe make you know smooth that out a little bit so we don't have quite a dramatic uh, curve there just kind of smooth out let's see if we have any other areas that might give us some difficulty uh, I think that looks good so now we can turn back on our extrusion turn back on the subdivision surface and there we go we got our snotty little blob and we got it bent so there we go and we can go ahead and let's uh, let's grab some textures. So let's grab the textures. And this is from my uh, Text Edge Pro uh, material kit. I'm going to paste that in there. And uh, let's apply this shiny little gummy texture in there. Let's bring in uh, the GSG HDRI Studio. And uh, let's move this all down. Let's uh, turn off the floor and just so we have some stuff going on let's uh let's give this a little darker color so we can make it out so there we go so let's actually so uh we manipulated uh we're deforming it with a bend we're deforming our object with a bend right here uh and you can see that we can get pretty close to 180 degrees and just make it totally just kind of curve over like a burrito or a hot dog bun or something like that. But let's do some more deformation. So we set everything up so we can deform this mesh, right? So this extruded object, and we can actually, if we wanted to extrude it even more and maybe get rid of the cap subdivision. So we have a nice rounded edge here, like thick, rounded edge. Let's actually go into our HDR Studio rig, rig and let's uh, open up the browser. Let's uh, let's choose something else that has a lot, a little bit more definition than the abstract three box studio. Let's do Kentucky Sunset. We get a little bit more stuff going on there. Uh, so let's, uh, instead of a bend deformer, let's make, uh, let's try to recreate like a roundish spherical uh, like Cinema 4D logo type thing. So to do that, the way I uh, went about doing that is I got a wrap deformer. And the same thing uh, for this wrap deformer to affect our uh, geometry. I'm just going to drag it under our null so it's in the same uh, subdivision or it's in the same hierarchy as our subdivision surface and all that good stuff. Uh, and right now by default it's set to cylindrical so it's going to wrap it uh, and bend it uh, just like our bend deformer was. But what we want to do is we want to wrap this spherically. And you can see that we have a very tiny spherical thing going on right now. Uh, so we actually need to adjust this and we can adjust the height of our little bendiness here, or the width, I'm sorry, and adjust the height. And you can see by this little uh, guide, I turn all this stuff off. This is basically the guide that's uh, telling you how this is being warped uh, or wrapped around the sphere. So right now we don't even have like a full sphere. It's cut off at negative uh, 45 degrees. So it's cut off right here and it's cut off at the bottom at 45 degrees. Uh, and it's also doesn't wrap all the way around because it's only going 
uh, 180 degrees, but we can have it go start at zero degrees and 360 to kind of complete that circle uh, longitudinally. longitudinally. <laughs> uh, so we can do that. So let's turn back on our geometry here. And we can actually turn off the subdivision surface here. Just, uh, and let's not make this maybe so thick. Sure, let's do that. Let's get our, uh, yep, that's cool. So let's, let's make this a little bit bigger, our wrap a little bit bigger. There we go. So now we're getting more of this curved along the sphere. And then again, we can adjust how far up our geometry goes by adjusting the latitude to start. So you can see if we push it too much to the top, it starts to pinch. Uh, so we don't want to get too, too close. And same thing for the bottom. You can see that our, the bottom of our geometry is kind of pinching a little bit. So you just want to tweak this enough and you can also move this if you wanted to do it like a like a twisty kind of thing that looks kind of cool let's actually add in a light so we can get some shadows and uh we'll move put a light up here very quickly uh shadow yes accuracy down let's uh bu -bu -bu. let's choose some fall off sure and uh, let's make this a little bluish uh, color and position this. All right, and let's just add some uh, ambient occlusion here too. Cool, so now we should be able to get some shading, some nice shading going on. Cool, cool, cool. Now we're getting somewhere. Now, now things are looking pretty sweet. Like, yeah, that looks, Pretty dang cool just by itself uh, with, you know, just some weird abstract stuff going on. Uh, so let's go back in here and you can see that uh, just by our subdivisions, we're not getting a ton of rounding right there. And of course, that's because our subdivision surface is off. So let's redo this. Let's re-render. Let's, let's back it out. Back it up. And probably this is kind of overkill because you see how dense our mesh is right now. Uh, you know, maybe we want to bump this down to one and see how that looks and because you never really want to overkill uh, with the subdivisions here. So you can see that just by, you know, making this really abstract little amoeba looking spline uh, and, uh, you know, adjusting uh, this with a wrap and deforming it with a wrap and you can see we're still getting some kind of pinching. So, you know, you can still tweak uh, all this stuff and maybe even jack up the angle to try to smooth stuff out so it's a little bit of give and take and experimenting because this is all going to be dependent on what your little uh, like amoeba uh, spline looks like so if you don't have as many curves maybe you don't need to go uh, so low or so high with your subdivisions so let's uh, let's bring let's not have any movement uh, z scale you know, we can actually make it thicker this way uh, and not having to go uh, into our uh, movement here uh, and extrude it uh, and make it a thicker extrude. We can just control it all within our wrap. Uh, so now we have one and I, I would say that's, you know, that looks pretty cool. Um, and the radius, of course, we can make that bigger as well. So let's... Uh, Intention, we can always, you know, flatten that out if we want to. That looks like uh, someone, a ghost is hugging you or something. I don't know. Maybe that's what you want to go for. Uh, so let's let's duplicate this. So this is uh, wrap one. And, uh, you know, if you really wanted to get, uh, uh, if you really wanted to get precise about this, you could just, you know, go in and, adjust this uh, spline on this one and make it a little bit of a different shape maybe delete some points here so we just want a different like amoeba blobby kind of shape here boop, boop, boop. like this cool and then we're going to do the same thing uh, so this is our new like blobby shape and let's turn back on our original wrap and now what we can do is, uh, you know, kind of adjust 
the uh, ten, uh, let's see adjust the we can adjust the scale if we want to but we can adjust the radius and kind of shrink this down you see that's going to be scaling to this axis center so we're going to read uh, need to reposition this over here so it looks like it's all kind of uh, wrapping around one sphere so let's actually create a sphere and move it in the center here so we're like getting really artsy fartsy and creating a new abstract Cinema 4D logo and we'll throw this little glowy texture on there uh, but you can see that we you know we created a new spline and uh, you know if, if we wanted to we can even just man, uh, manually kind of place this and rotate this around uh, and you know not be so exact but just kind of like eyeball it so everything's kind of going along this contour of this this spherical shape in the center there uh, and you get this really nice fold and you can kind of play with your camera angles and stuff like that and maybe adjust the size of this sphere and you know maybe you want to uh, duplicate this again and again uh, move this around maybe scale uh, this down rotate move this around like this maybe we go into uh, our spline and kind of scale that down so now we just have a tiny tiny piece like a little blade of this and again we can go into our wrap and adjust the radius of this so we can make this big or we can make this real tiny and whatever you want to do but uh, you know it's just equipping you with uh, the means to kind of play around and make cool stuff and you know when you extrude stuff now you can get these if you ever see this kind of stuff uh, you know, on Behance or whatever, people doing daily renders, like how do you get these really weird abstract kind of blobby things curved along surfaces, you know, because it looks like you just extruded something, but again, you had to, you know, know enough to adjust uh, the spline and then also add that uh, grid to give yourself enough geometry in your extrude to be able to deform all your objects like this. So again, I'm just shrinking the spline even more and cool let's maybe move this uh, move this over here maybe sure why not and uh, let's pick an angle let's get a camera in here let's add some cool uh, little distortion depth distortion going on let's give it a 35 and 50 that looks cool and let's render maybe move this down sure yeah that view looks good render that so uh, using the number one the uh, you know your extrude by using extrude uh, making a little globby blobby snotty spline uh, and uh, a subdivision surface and some wrap you created a uh, really cool uh, abstract render that kind of kind of resembles uh the cinema 4d logo the new cinema 4d logo so uh hopefully you learned enough to be dangerous with manipulating splines and extruding and uh wrap and again you you can use any of the deformers up here so bend you can do these same blobby shapes uh, and do some cool stuff with like say a spline wrap that could be cool uh but yeah this uh this is the technique to use to kind of get abstract little bendy uh, spherical wrapped shapes in cinema 4d so hopefully you guys learn something uh, if you make anything or have any questions be sure to post it in the comments section uh, and as always thank you guys so much for watching really appreciate it uh, that's it i'll see you guys in the next tutorial bye